Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flower Gold Wizard Channel. We're on our way up to extreme northern Wisconsin to do a little bit of gold mining. We got a hot tip. Ryan from Rhinelander invited me up and he's got uh, he's got the spot all plotted out. So we're on our way. Let's take a little look at the wizard weather. Negative eight degrees Fahrenheit. I'm only about a third of the way there. <laughs> all right, let's go get some gold. Back in a bit. Well, we're getting there. We're, we made it up to Ryan's shop. Country Tire, that's right. Best tires in town, or <laughs> at least in Rhinelander. Ooh, here's the waiting room. Ryan's back here, not working. <laughs> hey, Carol. Morning. Are you coming mining today? No. No, it's Too a little cold. chilly, huh? A little chilly. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get suited up, get the heck out of here. Come get some tires. Yeah, pretty nice roads. <laughs> we are back in the middle of nowhere. I tell ya. Well, we made it down to our spot. <laughs> uh, it's Ryan's spot. Uh, some old timer told him about this spot. He just can't get around anymore. As a matter of fact, he gave Ryan all his prospecting equipment. He just is getting too old for it. But he swears by this spot. Now we just walked down here after almost getting our truck stuck in 12 feet of snow, but we plowed through. Uh, we noticed that there is some liquid water available and we'll go ahead and show uh, what we see so far. And he did give us a little bit of an inclination as to where to get started, a uh, possible clay layer. So we're gonna try and locate that right now and get the shovels to work and back in a bit. Now being so darn cold out here, I figured I'd either have to just do a little bit of speed painting and keep all my gear underneath the water or some kind of way to keep all your gear under the water. But I wanted to really move some material coming down to a new spot. And I brought this little sluice along today. Now I've had that configuration on my sluice for a while. I did switch up the indicator mat here. I used to have a little high-low V strip on there, but I didn't like the way that it didn't clear out. So I flipped it right over and now I got the flat side up and I think that's gonna work 100% better. And as long as we're gonna be down here trying to move material, I brought my screen along. That just pops right on there. All I gotta do is shovel on that baby, keep the whole thing underneath the water, and I think we'll get more material moved that way. So looking down at the creek here, like I said, there's some open water, and it's not very deep. Matter of fact, we do, we're just breaking through this stuff here, and it's only about a foot deep, and there's a bend right up here. I'll take a little hike up there. Oop, I just broke through again. Now this old timer, he says, that right up along that bank right there, and in this general area, there's a layer of gray clay that he does fantastic on. Now there's no nuggets up in here, at least that uh, he's aware of, but he says he gets plenty of color. So we're gonna put that to the test right now. All right, let's build a dam. All right, we got warm real quick, digging this here dam. We got one built. Got my sluice up and running right here. Got a good amount of flow going through there. As you can see, got my screen on, and the water's about a half an inch over the top of my screen, and it's coming off of there pretty good. Now, the water is just a little bit deep, so I have less pitch in the system here. Otherwise, I think if you have that much water rolling through there with a say 12 inches or 12 degree pitch, it'd blow all your material right out of there and you wouldn't catch anything at all. So more water, less pitch. Now all we gotta do is get doing the real work, try to find some material over here. I'm gonna grab my pan quickly and I got a nice hole dug here that I made this dam out of and we'll take a look at the material in it and we'll go from there. Here's a look at that material right here. I just took that right out of the middle of this here creek right here. I think I want to work up and along that bank there. I just wanted to see uh, what type of the base material here was made out of. And so far it looks to be really granitic. Get a up close and personal shot of that stuff there. And we're going to go ahead and pan this stuff out here. That, yeah, I don't see any clay of any kind in there or nothing. Real light wash stuff. But we're going to pan it out anyway. Take a little look. 
pretty interesting rocks in there for sure. Keep an eye out for agates in this neck of the woods. Get rid of some of this big stuff here. Mostly right now what I'm looking for is black sand. That's always been a good indicator. But we're after the gold. Yeah. It's more of that big stuff. And this stuff is extremely easy to pan. Extremely. I don't, I don't see any black sand in there at all. Yeah. Not even a tiniest bit of black sand, but are you kidding me? Do I see a piece of gold in there? No, I don't. <laughs> a little piece of mica or something. So I th at least I think we know what we're dealing with here. I'll keep that under the water and we'll go on the hunt. And kablamo, we found what we're looking for. Let me show you. So we got our dam built up there and that old timer told Ryan on a map that right in this corner right here on this, on this side of the bank that there was a layer of gray clay he was chasing that was just full of uh, fine gold. And I came over here and I took a little bit of time and I busted some of this ice up and out of there. It's, I don't know, maybe four or five inches thick or so, no big deal. And my very first shovel I went up towards the bank just a little bit. I could tell that the tip of my shovel got into something soft. Here's a bunch of gravels right here. But on the underside of that, look at that. Gray clay. That is a huge, huge score right there. Now I'm assuming that he got most of the gravels off of this because the clay, the clay was already exposed right there. But there still is some gravel mixed in, in on top of this stuff. So I think we just gotta remove some more of this ice right here to get down to some of the clay layer that he hasn't worked already. So let's get started. I'm gonna pan this one out just to see if there's anything left in this and we'll take a look at it. All right, slight change of plans. Now that clay area down there is a little too far away from my sluice to be able to shovel it right on there. And I did bring my classifier, there it is. I just had to walk all the way back up to the truck to get it. That snow is deep, real deep. All right, let's get back down there and do it. Do some classifying. I'll just scoop it into my, into my sluice without the screen on it. Back in a bit. All right, we're almost back. I hear Ryan down there. He's working somewhere down there. Let's see if we can find him. There he is. Big old Sasquatch breaking off branches. Say happy birthday to Ryan, everybody. <laughs> Here's one way to thaw out your stuff. My shovel's getting a little icy. <laughs> Let's we'll give her a little bit of heat. There we go. Piece of cake. Much better. All right, well that stuff's over there thawing out. I've got a partial pail of material here. I'm gonna start running over my sluice. Now I've only got it filled up maybe a third of the way because that stuff is full of that gray clay material. And you don't want to put too much of that in a pail because it will definitely clog up your system along with making a big block of clay in your pail. We don't want that. So it looks like we're running pretty good. That thing up there, that little indicator mat, that worked really well. I think the gold should stick to it just like it does on my other sluice systems. Gold and silicone just love each other for some reason. And it looks like I'm balling up down here on the end just a little bit. But it is exchanging like from here up really well. So if we're gonna find some gold, I think uh, this thing's gonna catch it. So I'm gonna feed this rest of this through there. And see what becomes of it. Back in a bit. On a side note, you see my hand steaming? 
They always stay warm. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just steaming like crazy. <laughs> I tell you. All right, that pail is run through. And I thought I may have spotted a couple little specks of gold in there, here or there, but it's it's kind of tough with the water uh, running the way it is. Everything's kind of blue, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna do a cleanup, but first I gotta melt all the stuff in my pail. Let's throw salad in there. So we got it over here by the fire. I'll get that stuff thawed out and I'll throw that through the sluice quickly and then we'll dump my sluices in a clean bucket of water and pan it out. All right, let's clean this baby up. A couple little splashes. And get that baby back under the water because it's cold. All right, there's our concentrates. Let's see what's in it. All right, let me see if I can pan this back at one hand and film. This stuff's incredibly easy. Oh, well, there is a touch of black sand in there at the bottom, I guess. Not much at all. I mean, if there's gold here, that'll be fantastic. I do see a piece of gold. Right. There to go, right there. Get that back under the water. Really tiny piece. And that appears to be it. One little teeny weeny tiny piece right there. <laughs> so it's not the big bonanza we were probably looking for, but I will say that I did hit clay instantly when my shovel hit the, hit the crick over there. So I'm probably digging right on top of where that guy, that old timer left off. You know, so there very well may be some good spots in here. But obviously this isn't the best time of the year to find them. <laughs> so I'm gonna play around here a little bit, uh, a little bit longer with this stuff here. We'll come back in the summer and really see if we can dial in on it. But I've got some really cool stuff back at the shop to go through today yet. So we're gonna do that. Back in a bit. How'd you guys beat me here? What the heck? <laughs> well, as long as we're in there, let's grab one. That's right. All right, I said we had something cool to look at. We do. I went ahead and I ordered a bag from Chuck Gentles. Here's a couple of his stickers right here. And he sent me a bag. There it is now, pretty good sized bag. We're gonna tear into that ASAP. Before we get started, I just want you guys to know that this is a giveaway video. That's right, a little something I'm gonna call over the top. No, it's not a crappy Sylvester Stallone movie. It's something we're gonna call over the top for a reason. Now, typically when you order bags of paint dirt, you always get just a little bit more than you ordered. And in this case, I ordered a three gram bag from Chuck and let's find out if he sent a little bit extra. You guys are gonna guess the weight of the total and everything that's over, I'm sending off to one lucky commenter. That's right, let's get started. All right, we've got that bag opened up. Look inside of there one time, that's right. It is black. I've panned some stuff from Arizona before well, a couple of times, and there's always tons and tons of black sand in there. So I've got my kitchen type strainer device right here. I'm gonna turn this into bigs and smalls, and then we're gonna pan it alls. Now it looks to me like most of the material that was in that bag is of the small type variety. Here's the bigs. Here's the littles. Let's see if there's any magnetics in it with my magnet. And, well, there's gobs and gobs of it. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll take a little bit of time and remove a couple of those magnetics just so it's easier to pan, and we'll get to it. I'll show you a pretty easy way to get the black magnetics, or any magnetics, out of your material if you don't have a black sand separator like I got from Coulter Young or other such equipment. And this works pretty darn well. What I'll do is I'll just take a take a glob of that black sand right there, give it a little shake, and I'll dump it in this pan right here. Now I'll spread it out a little bit, just like that, and I'll dump it in this pan. Spread it out a little bit, and then I'll dump it in this pan. 
just like that. Then I'll dump the rest, what comes out of that, right in there. Do that again. And there's very little on there. We'll dump it in there, dump it in there, dump it in there. You may lose a couple of minute, microscopic, little tiny, eeny weeny pieces, but this stuff is 100% dry. And if I lose a couple of tiny, teeny, eeny weeny, microscopic pieces in the long run, I'm fine with that. It all goes back into my pay dirt bags anyway. But if you're after every teeny weeny piece, add another pan. Do it five times, but it's a great way to do it. So we're going to go ahead and get a bunch of the magnetics out of here. Just like that. I'll even do that a couple of times in there. Now I'll switch pans. Just like that. And done. Let me work through this material and we'll add some water. Now that was easy. Here's our magnetic material right here, out of the large stuff, bigger than kitchen type strainer device. Here's our smaller than material right here, and that's a good amount. I would bet you that's 25% of what we started with. Here's our non-magnetic, larger than kitchen type strainer device, and here's our smaller than non-magnetics. And I do see a good amount of gold in each one. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I'll shake that down, and you can spot gold in there. Quite readily. <laughs> Some nice chunky looking bits in there. All right. Now the whole object of that exercise right there <clears throat> was so we didn't have to pan out all this magnetic material just to make it easier to get our gold out. But just to prove that I'm pretty sure that this <laughs> system that I got works, we're going to go ahead and pan this out anyway. So I'll go ahead and dip that in my water. That stuff is incredibly, incredibly heavy. I'll make sure and I'll, it washes off pretty decent. The, the grain sizes on that stuff are pretty, pretty large. So they, they grab the water is basically how, how, make, how it makes that easy. And I'll get a really good side to side motion on this pan right there. Try to get any gold in there, if there is any, to settle to the bottom of the pan. That's how you pan through this black sand. I do it on the beach so darn much, and that stuff is near impossible to pan like this. So this, this here desert stuff is a little bit easier. And we just about got that, and that's as far as I'm going to take that. And I'll fan that back and see if there's any gold in it at all. And I do not see one speck, not one speck in there. All right, so that worked quite well. I'll put that off to the side. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this here show, the gold. Let's start off with the larger than kitchen type strainer device stuff right here. This shouldn't be too hard at all. It looks to be maybe, I don't know, two tablespoons, if that, a tablespoon and a half-ish. I don't even know if I have to, if I have to pan, fan any of this out like this, but we will. In the long run, it'll just be less stuff I gotta look through to see all these monster nuggets I'm assuming are in here. Chuck has a, a good channel out in Arizona there. He does a lot of dredging and dry washing and <coughs> crevicing, etc. So there isn't too much material left in here. We'll fan that out. I'm gonna bring that down away from the edge of that pan just a little bit. Then I'm gonna tap the gold up just like that. Ooh, look at there. Let me get some more of that non-gold material out of there. Oh, that's beautiful looking stuff, Chuck. Thank you. Look at that. Get that up in there. Ooh, fantastic. Here we go. All right, let me get that into a pile somewhere, and we'll start on our smaller than kitchen type strainer device material. And here's the large gold, all cleaned up nicely. Ooh, are those some fantastic pieces or what? Beautiful. Woo hoo! What do you think, Rigby? <coughs> all right, that was a lot of fun. Now here is half of the smaller than kitchen type strainer device material right here. Looks to be just a little bit dirty. That's no big deal. I've gotten way dirtier material than that. <laughs> 
I'm going to run this right over my small little riffles right here. This works so darn good. And we'll fan off some of that stuff there. Oh, this piece of cake so far. There is a little bit of black sand left in there, but not a whole lot. This is quite a bit easier with all that magnetics removed. And as you saw, we did get all the gold out. There wasn't one tiny little piece in there. If I had a little bit more material than I have uh, today to play with, I'd hook that Coulter Young uh, black magnetic separator up. But I don't, and this is fun. And that's probably far enough. And we'll get all that stuff out of them little riffles right there. And we'll see what's in this stuff. Ooh, I can start, I can see gold showing up in the body of the material here. We'll give it a tap and a fan. And we'll pull that back, see if we can't see a big old pile. Oh yeah, there's plenty of gold showing up in there. All right, let me get this one cleaned up and we'll take a look at it. And the second half. There's a pretty good amount of gold in that first one there. I'm quite pleased. All right, let's get this stuff all dirty out of here. <laughs> I'm looking through this hole in that camera, that'll give me a little taste. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can spot a little bit of color in there. I'll pan this one off camera too. Oh yeah, here it comes. And here's all that gold all cleaned up in my frying pan here. We're going to get that on the stove of wonder over there. Dry it out. And here's our gold all nice and dried up. Look at that little swirling action. It's really nice chunky pieces in there. And a number of nice looking flat ones. And some dust. All right, let's give that stuff away. And then we'll give it away. All right, I've got my scale on, all zeroed out. Let me get that so you guys can see it. <laughs> all right, let's weigh this stuff. Give it a little tap. Oh, I love that sound. Ooh, get in there. It is definitely, definitely over three grams. Nice. Well, that was a lot of fun. We got an awesome bag from Chuck Gentles. Go check out his channel. You're going to love it. He does a lot of stuff down in Arizona. I wish I could do around here. But it's always snowing and it's always 20 below. <sighs> and I'd like to thank Ryan for inviting me up to his new spot. That spot has potential like you wouldn't believe. All that gray clay with that gravel sitting up on top of it. Once that ice gone, we're going to be able to dial in on the gold. That's a fact. Come on, summer. So let the games begin. The first person to guess how much all that gold weighed in total to the thousandth of a gram, I'm gonna mail off to you what it was over the three gram mark. I'll put it in a bag of pay dirt and mail it right to you. Good luck, everybody. So all in all, I had a lot of fun and I hope you guys did too. And on another note, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on out there in the world. So I just wanna give a shout out to all our service members. Be safe out there and thank you for your service. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build our channel. Flower Gold Wizards, out. Oh.